Hello class, this is Demetrius Wilson with Human Resource Management. This is Chapter 8 on Training and Development. Training and Development is very important uh, to get especially new uh, employees and or associates acclimated to your environment. Also very important for uh, more tenured associates uh, because they need to uh, enhance their skills within the work environment. So our learning objective is uh, to explain the four steps involved when training an employee. Uh, steps to take in training an employee, they are, uh, well, first we ask the question, why train? Well, you want to train because uh, you want people to learn things. You want them to learn to do things the right way. Uh, typically, when people go on that exit interview and they say, why, uh, why did you leave? And they say, you know, I was never properly trained. I hear that a lot in, in exit interviews. So uh, the more you can stay away from that uh, being something that's told in regards to your department, the better off you'll be. Uh, what happens when companies don't train? Well, you have high turnover, you have job dissatisfaction, you have individuals make mistake because the mistakes because they weren't appropriately trained. Uh, employee orientation is, is the best time to just go ahead and start that training right then and there and just say, hey, uh, we're going to take your employee orientation, get you acclimated to the company, and get you right into training uh, so that you know what we're doing. Of course, it's not all going to set into your brain and then get you out there with some on-the-job training, and then you're going to have the whole the whole gamut of what, what you need to do in your work experience. Uh, and then goals. It helps you to set the goals and know and understand what you need to do and how you need to do it uh, within your workspace. Uh, so you have in-house training. Of course, you have different types of training. Uh, so what is it? So examples, you have ethics training. Uh, so you talk about in your work environment, your particular company, what is the appropriate thing to do and how do you handle ethics and business ethics. Uh, sexual harassment, every two years, managers, you have to have that, uh, that training uh, for sexual harassment. Most, uh, most specifically, uh, the managers need to have that that training, multicultural training, getting engrossed in someone else's culture, uh, communication training. A lot of managers don't know how to communicate, especially if you look at certain environments like, let's say, sales. Uh, you're the best salesman, so I end up making you the best sal the sales manager, uh, but you don't have any any people skills. Well, that would be a you know a faux pas on my on my part, but. Um, uh, but some people need, uh, you know, to learn how to communicate a little bit better, uh, whether it be their verbal or nonverbal communication or the choice of communication method. I should have sent the email as opposed to say this face to face, or I should have said this face to face as opposed to sending an email. Uh, management training, right? So you have managers. Uh, so you have a lot of first time managers and those managers say, hey, you were in a different department. Now you're in this department and we've trained. We want to train you to become a, a, a better manager. We see the potential, but we need to show you how to sharpen up your management skills. And then customer service, right? Uh, customer service, uh, one that I really like is um, uh, the telephone doctor. I use that a lot in the organizations that I work for. Uh, and uh, order it as a DVD series, and, and, it's, and it's pretty great. So you get that customer service, that soft skills training. That has nothing to do with specifically uh, uh, anything in your work environment. Something that you could take to any company because it's all about customer service and how you handle and manage people. Uh, mentoring is a formal program, a part of the company culture. Uh, so you have to uh, be careful with that. And I'm going to explain why. And then mentor selection. So mentoring is an individual who's been in the company, knows what they're doing, they're seasoned, and uh, then they're going to they're take a new employee under their wing. Or it could be a, per a person that's been there for a while, and we're going to take them under the wing and say, hey, you know what? Uh, you know, I'm going to kind of show you the ropes. But um, uh, part of the company culture, right? So if I start and say, we're going to do a, a mentor mentoring program and nobody else in the company is involved in it except for my department, then it's probably not going to work out because other people aren't going to support it. Uh, so you have to have the support of, uh, you know, of upper management, management, and everyone else around and involved. And then mentor selection, um, you know, obviously you have to pick the right person. Uh, you don't want to find somebody or get somebody who's only been at the company a, a you know, a short bit of time and you don't want to get somebody who's, uh, you know, who's really not very positive and, and people aren't going to want to be around. Uh, external training. So just as it sounds, external training is outside of the company, right? It's, it's, it's training that's not internal. It's outside of the company. doesn't take place there. Uh, some type of examples. Well, I've been to a seminar uh, where... Um, it was just for managers, right? Uh, so it was, uh, you know, more seasoned manager seminar. Went there, got some good tips, uh, you know, and, and learned a lot from it. But that's external uh, training. Uh, so if you have to send somebody out to do certain things, or you get to send somebody out to get compliant in something like Six Sigma. Uh, so I'm going to send you out, get your Six Sigma green belt, come back and fix our processes. So that's external training. 
Another learning objective, be able to explain and give examples of types of training that can be offered with an organization. So we have technological training. So that's, you know, techno technology training. Uh, you know, you have to be you know, fully skilled on Word, especially Excel. I've seen so many jobs lost because people cannot use Excel appropriately. Uh, <clears throat> Outlook, all kind of different things that have to do with the technology. Uh, so you have to make sure that you're abreast of, of that or you will be left behind. Uh, quality training, like, like I said, about Six Sigma, you have to know and understand um, how to replicate your process. It needs to be one plus one is two. Now, one plus one is two sometimes and one plus one is three sometimes. It, it, it needs to be the same uh, every time, right? Uh, you know, like uh, Six Sigma, when they do that, uh, and uh, the whole thing is about having 3.4 defects for every million, right? So 3.4 is not many. Uh, out of a million and so you have to look at uh, you know how to train people in terms of quality how to audit things uh, how to even just in the customer service unit how to audit calls like what are you looking for what are you trying to pay attention to to see if the individual did it right <clears throat> skills training so all kind of different skills training just like I said soft skills training they're just just those are just normal you know uh, just regular general graces that you have in regards to speaking with people dealing with people mannerisms body language things of that nature uh, other type of skills training um, could be sales skills training, right? So we're going to have some sales skills training specific to the product that uh, that we're currently selling. I used to sell copiers, right? So we had sales skills training on that particular copier in the process that we, we would use to try and close a sale. Uh, soft skills training, what is it? Uh, so like I said, just skills training uh, typically in regards to how to just get along with people, uh, <clears throat> even when things aren't good, uh, how to manage conflict, things of that nature. Uh, so soft skills will take you a long, long way. Although sometimes people think like, oh, I don't need to go to this telephone doctor thing. No, it's going to really help you. Uh, professional legal training, right? So something having to do with your, you know, professional designation. Uh, like for instance, I have an insurance license, and uh, you have to do certain training and continuing education for that. So you know, unless you, you know, you don't want to keep the you keep your license going uh, but if you want to keep it going you have to do a certain amount of hours uh, for continuing education and team training as everybody gets in the room we're going to train everybody on this process and once we're done training you then you should be able to do it so um, there's some advantages and disadvantages of team training you know everybody's getting the same thing everybody's on the same page but a lot of times in team training there are people who will take the training off the off the beaten path and uh, they'll, they'll take the training another direction that the trainer does not want it to go. So, you know, there are always advantages and disadvantages to everything. Managerial training, I already talked about that. That's a manager going out, getting some training uh, in terms of sharpening up his skills. I've never been to a management training session and not learned something. So, uh, you know, it's always good to expand your horizons and learn. And in safety uh, training, like with OSHA, uh, you have to know and understand what should be done and what shouldn't be done within a work environment uh you know test the things that with throughout the work environment does the you know the ad machine work uh do you have people who are cpr for, uh, certified you know, just th just things like that you know how to lift if you work in a warehouse like i've worked in a warehouse before you know stacking boxes putting them on the pallet shrink wrapping them and taking a forklift and, and sticking them somewhere and uh, you have to be you have to be safe in terms of that right because some people get their their foot run over by uh, by, by a forklift, some people, you know, throw their back out because of uh, carrying big boxes, all kind of different things like that. Uh, another learning objective, so explain the types of training and uh, delivery method. So all different, so we talked about different types of training. Let's talk about the delivery method. How is that training going to get to you? So you have on-the-job coaching, right? So on-the-job is, like it says, it's on-the-job. This is how you're going to figure it out. You know, some, some jobs, they just only do on-the-job training. They say, you know what? The only way you can learn this is to sit down and learn it with someone who can do it. Uh, mentoring training, we talked about that already. So the training where you sit down with the mentor, uh, you figure out, uh, you know, what kind of what direction you want to go. Any tough questions, you're going to ask them as opposed to asking your manager. And brown bag training delivery, right? So brown bag can be used a lot of different ways, but typically a lot of uh, heads of organizations use brown bag, uh, like a brown bag lunch. They tell people, bring your lunch. You're going to sit down with the president of the company. You guys are just going to eat and talk. And it, and it is pretty good because I've been to a few of them and I've listened and said, you know what, that's a great idea. Uh, you know, we should we should move with that by just sitting there and listening, right? So remember, that's part of the communication process is to be able to listen. <clears throat> Uh, Web-based train delivery, like you guys are all on the computer because uh, it's all like glass and you're looking at these videos, right? So you, you obviously know what web-based training delivery is. 
you know, it's just something that's, that's delivered over the, the web. Yeah, sometimes they say a lose certain thing in, in translation, but uh, if you're smart enough to pick it up, um, uh, it, it becomes very easy. Uh, job shadow training delivery, so you're going to shadow someone who's doing the job. I'm sure you have a lot of questions if you shadow someone. Uh, you know, I've gone to organizations and shadowed everybody within the organization. And yeah, they felt uncomfortable at first, but I did uncover certain problems, miscommunications, and things of that nature. Uh, job swap training delivery, right? So the two of us, let's switch jobs, right? So I go to your job, you go to my job. And, uh, you know, we kind of learn, especially a lot of times they do that with, uh, <clears throat> with companies that... Um, or not companies, but individuals maybe not having the uh, best interaction between the departments, right? So take somebody from each one of the departments, swap them, and then they come back with a better uh, perspective in regards to the other uh, department. Vestible training, uh, I know it may say something a little bit different in the text, but vestible is like if I had an insurance company and I talked to you uh, and, and your Cerritos College and, and I said, you know what, I'm, can you do an insurance class, but I want you to use my actual program so they already come in from uh, their graduation, knowing exactly how to work there. Um, international assignment uh, training, right? So you always have to have uh, international training, especially for the expatriates uh, or individuals that, that go overseas uh, to, uh, to uh, make a living. Uh, so two more learning objectives. Uh, so be able to design a training program framework and understand the uses and applications of a career development plan. Uh, so designing a training program. Training programs have a few main components, needs assessment and learning objectives, right? So needs assessment, what do we need? And then what are learning objectives? Uh, consideration of learning styles, right? So you have some, may have some individuals that don't have uh, the same learning style. You may have some individuals that just simply have a weird learning style. Uh, but <clears throat> you have to figure out how to train towards that individual as well. And then your delivery mode, like what's it gonna be? Is it gonna be online? Is, is it gonna be person to person? Uh, is it gonna be hybrid? You know, it just, it just depends. Uh, then designing a training program. Training programs have a few main comp uh, components. Um, you have a budget, right? So you have to have a budget to so, say, you know, you have to pay people, you have to get snacks, all, all kind of different things. So you cannot exceed your budget. And delivery style, like what's my delivery style? Uh, you know, everybody trains differently. Um, I would like to say that I'm, you know, a, a decent trainer, uh, but I've seen some people just get out there and, and they just turn people off, right? Uh, so you need to be somewhat captivating and, uh, you know, know how to deliver that. Um, audience, right? Yeah, the de it depends on who who it is, right? It could it could be, you know, that you're you're speaking to. Uh, high level executives and then it could be that you're speaking to lower level associates and you have to uh, sort of fix your your um, your your speech or your training session and everything towards that because uh, you know if, it, if it's the higher level people they don't want to hear the nitty-gritty all the way at the bottom level things that the associates are maybe doing and if it's the associates uh, maybe it's some of the stuff may be over their head so you have to know who definitely know who your audience is and training programs have a few main components. Uh, they also have uh, content, right? What's your content? Timelines, uh, how much time do you actually have? And communication, uh, how does the communication flow? I've seen a lot of trainers. I've also seen a lot of bad trainers. So, uh, you know, developing that training program is not the easiest thing in the world. But, you know, you can use people, get feedback from them, understand, like, what, what went well, what didn't go well, and then uh, make some adjustments. Uh, and then career development and succession planning, right? So uh, you need to develop individuals within your organization. And succession planning means that, you know what, I'm not going to do this for the rest of my life. I need to find somebody that's going to come in behind me as I try and move on and upward throughout the company. Uh, you need to have an individual to uh, to replace you, right? Because you can't just leave and, and, you know, skate out and go to the other position and then uh, leave your current position kind of high and dry, especially if it's internally. Uh, so succession planning is very, very important within uh, an organization. So that's it. Only 21 slides uh, for Chapter 8. Uh, be sure to uh, complete uh, whatever quizzes uh, and or homework is available for you for this week. Uh, and uh, like I said, you know, class is, is more than if it's, you're looking at that chapter eight lecture and there are 15 uh, chapters where we're past the, the halfway point. So, you know, things are running mighty fast. Uh, so uh, hang in there. Be sure to complete your assignments. If you have any questions, be sure to email me. Uh, I'll get back to you and uh, we'll work on a resolution. Uh, so as always, uh, hopefully you guys have a good day and a great week.